One of the most amazing changes happened this season, that being the introduction of the exotic mission rotator. Now, the purpose of this mission rotator is to feature an exotic mission from Destiny's Past that will rotate each week. Now, these missions will cycle between Presage from Season of the Chosen, Vox Obscura from Season of the Risen, and Operation Seraph Shield from Season of the Seraph. Now, once completed, each mission will reward you with their associated exotic weapon as a red border, allowing you to obtain the pattern and the ability to craft said weapon. This week's available mission is Presage, which means guys, if you want to craft Dead Man's Tail today, then you need to play this mission. Now, for some of us, it has been a while since we've done Presage. We're going to give you a refresher on how to complete this mission, as well as the reward structure for Presage. Then we're also going to talk about Dead Man's Tail and the new traits that you can get on that weapon and which role for us was our number one pick. Now, important note before we get into this guide, in order to play Presage, you have to own Beyond Light or Season the Chosen, which believe me, I have some thoughts about. But with that being said though, you can begin this exotic mission by selecting it via the Legends tab in the Director. Now for our guy, once you load into the mission, you'll have some platforming to do right there on the left, jump across guys, and just keep making your way up to the top until you see that opening on the side. You'll have a bit of a maze to progress through to get to the first actual mechanics. So we're gonna actually let some of this gameplay run for just a bit so you can see the path to go and where to jump. Then we'll speak again when we've reached the mechanics of this dungeon. All right, guys, once you drop down here, you're now inside the ship and pulling this lever will open the doors for your fire team if they don't feel like going through all the platforming shenanigans to get there. Now, get used to pulling levers because there's a lot of that in this dungeon. If you turn around and go to the opposite side of the room, you'll find the other main mechanic littered throughout this dungeon, which are these egregore spores. When you stand next to these spores and then damage them, you'll get a buff called egregore link, which allows you to walk through egregore barriers. Head on through the barriers here, then continue to the next room and follow this path on the screen. Now, when you drop down into the Glycan, you'll want to turn around and go into this corridor. Kill the Screeps and then pull the lever at the end of the hall. This will open a door with spores inside back when you drop down. Grab the buff, jump across the gap, and follow this path, killing any Screeps along the way. Here you'll have to shoot this power cell to then open the door in the floor which leads into the room with more screeps. After clearing the enemies, there will be a second floor above, actually where you came into this room with a lever to pull. Pulling this lever opens a door on the opposite side of the room, go out that door and jump across the gap to a second lever. Pull that, then jump back across the gap, drop down, and you'll see another power cell that you'll have to shoot. Once destroyed, go back up through the door again and drop down onto this platform and head down this chute into honestly the best part of this mission, which is this giant trash compactor room. Now, in this mini encounter, if you want to call it that, you'll pull the lever on the very back wall, and the floor will open up revealing shootable panels, and the walls will begin to close in on you. What you need to do is find three power cells and destroy them. These will be hidden beneath three of those panels on the floor, but you got to do it quickly because the walls are literally closing in on you, and yes, you will die. You've also got screeves that are going to be constantly spawning in, but once successfully done, an entrance in the floor will open, and you can jump down, and you're set. 
safe. Now here you're gonna be in the darkness zone and you'll have an assortment of scorn spawn. Not the two crazy guys, no boss or anything. Just take everyone down and then follow the path on the screen to the first real encounter of this dungeon, the restricted zone. Now in this room, there's no mechanics at all. All you've got to do is survive, defeat the scorn, and take down the two yellow bar abominations at the back of the room. Years ago when Presage released, this was a bit tougher. But now with things like Strand and all the new power that we have, this room is actually really easy. Pretty much the whole mission is really easy, especially on normal. Just recap it with abilities and you'll be fine. Once enemies are defeated, follow this path to reach the next area. Now, once you drop down into this room, to the left, there will be a lever to pull that will reveal Egregor Spores. Grab the buff, then head through the door on the right side of the room. You'll have to clear some screeves in here, but once that's done, you want to pull this lever, then shoot the power cell that's revealed on the opposite side of the room. This will deactivate the electric barrier, allowing the jump up to the second floor to then pull another lever, and then a third lever, which will open a door down below with spores inside. Grab the spore buff and follow this route to the next room. Here you'll clear the room of scorn, and then you've got more levers to pull and power cells to destroy. You'll start with the lever at the back of the room. This will open a door with a turret inside. Destroy the turret and shoot the power cell inside, and this will reveal spores behind a door. Grab the spore buff again and follow this path to the next room. Now you're in the dark vents. In these vents, there will be screeves hiding about. So if it's your first time running this, it's best to shoot the panels and clear the screeves so you don't get deleted around a corner when you're trying to find the correct way to go. Either way, when you first jump down, behind the panel to the right will be Egregor Spores. Grab the buff, then follow this path on the screen to make your way through the vents. Now you'll be back in a room you were in just a few moments ago, but this time a new door is open. So grab the spore buff again, head through that door and kill that scorn that just spawned in. Now there will be a lever at the back of this room behind some egregore that you'll have to pull. This will allow you to shoot a power cell right beside it, which will then give you access to more spores on the other side of the room. Grab the buff and then make your way to the next room. Now here you're going to want to jump across the panels, taking care of the scorn snipers along the way until you get to the end of the room. You'll pull a lever which will reveal a turret destroy the turret and then head back the way you came and then shoot the now revealed power cell then jump back across the panels to where the spores are grab the buff then follow this path to make it to the boss room All right, guys, after you drop down, you're finally at the boss. The boss will spawn right in as you drop down, but doing just a small chunk of damage will send him teleporting away. He is so much easier than what he was years ago. Do damage to him. Literally a single rocket shot or two will literally send him TP in. Now, other scorn enemies will also be spawning in, so you're going to have to deal with those as well. The counter, though, is very simple. You no longer have to deal with Egregor's spore mechanic. There's none of that here. All you have to do is just worry about pulling levers. After you clear the scorn out, though, there will be be three levers you have to pull one on each side of the room and then one in the furnace room which is kind of in between the two levers through this door now this room will burn you so you want to get in there pull that lever quickly and then get back out once all three levers though are pulled you'll actually be able to drop down to the floor below which actually has three drop down areas one is opposite the furnace room and the other two are behind the first two levers now the boss is going to be down there locate them call them out to your teammates and just unload on them there will also be some on the scorn but essentially once you get the boss 
pulse down a third of his health, the room will turn red and begin to burn you. This is where you want to jump back to the room you were before, which is just the next floor up, and essentially just run the same thing all over again. Kill the scorn, pull the levers, drop down, deal damage to the boss, and repeat until he's finally dead. Now, once you've defeated him, there will be a door on the top floor you can go through, which would then lead you to the guardian hanging from the ceiling. Interact with him to claim your prize, which is the exotic scout rifle Dead Man's Tail. Now, it will be a red border weapon, and guys, you will be able to immediately craft this thing, which takes us to the exotic mission weapon crafting rewards and how it's being structured. The first completion of this mission, whether it's on normal or legendary difficulty, will award the exotic deep side weapon associated with that mission. So for this case, Dead Man's Tail for Presage. Now, extracting or dismantling this deep side weapon will then grant the pattern. But for me, guys, the craftable version of the weapon literally just dropped right on me. Like, there was no reason to make another one. Now, each completion of the normal or legendary version of the exotic mission will then award an intrinsic upgrade that can be used to craft the exotic weapon, that being Dead Man's Tail in this case. Now, keep in mind, guys, you need these intrinsic upgrades because it's literally what's going to be unlocking the other traits found in this weapon. Yes, you do need to level up the weapon itself, but you also need the intrinsic upgrades to then select those perks. Now, what about the exotic catalyst? Well, the exotic catalyst will require you, if you have not gotten Dead Man's Tail before, to do this mission, but the legendary version, which is much more difficult and on a timer. So pretty much get used to running this mission on normal guys before attempting the legendary version, because what's really going to trip you up is not necessarily the ads or the boss or anything like that. It's just maneuvering through this mission in a timely manner. Now, the exotic catalyst is definitely worth it on DMT. It comes with the perk Dark Forge Trigger, which removes hip fire accuracy penalties and increases rate of fire from the hip. Also, stacks of cranial spike increases your hip rate of fire even further. Fellas, if you want that vibe, that space cowboy role playing experience, then you need that catalyst. That right there really tops this weapon off. Now, armor and weapons are also going to be rewarded for completing this mission. The biggest benefit here is the weekly mission rewards. You will get one guaranteed deep sight weapon that has not had its pattern unlocked and one piece of armor that has not already been obtained. Now, if all weapon patterns and armor have been obtained for the in rotation mission, a random world drop will be awarded. Now, on every completion, you will receive an additional weapon from the mission's weapon pool. However, this weapon will have no knockout or guaranteed deep side behavior, as in the weapon can roll with deep sides, but of course, this is going to be left up to RNG. Now, for the Presage mission specifically, for our exotic weapons, you of course have Dead Man's Tail, which will be craftable upon completing the mission, which by the way has these three new traits that being Compulsive Loader, Rapid Hit, and Shoot to Loot. Now, all the armor and weapons from Season the Haunted will also be dropping. That includes Nezarax Whisper, Bump in the Night, Tears of Contrition, Hollow Denial, Fire Fright, Without Remorse, the Opulent weapons such as Awestringer, Drain, Beloved, Callus Mini Tool, and this armor set right here. Lots of really good stuff here, guys. Back in the day, these were like very coveted weapons and still are. But if you're in a situation right now where you have like one or two more weapons off from completing those weapon patterns, this is a great way to finish things off. Now, alongside the mission rewards, there is a weekly challenge. This weekly challenge has the same armor and weapon pool as the exotic mission, which is in rotation. The challenge rewards will be output at pinnacle power and will prioritize the rewards in the following order. One guaranteed deep side weapon that has not had its pattern unlocked. If weapon patterns have been unlocked, the challenge will award one armor piece that has not been obtained based on your current class. And if all weapon patterns and armor have been obtained for the in rotation mission, the challenge will output a random weapon or armor. Now, the weekly challenge this week is just completing the mission twice or once on the highest difficulty. Considering most people are going for that intrinsic anyways, this is very easy to do. Which takes us to our review of Dead Man's Tale. How is the new craftable DMT? First up, a small refresher here on DMT's exotic perk, Cranial Spike. Chaining precision hits, grant bonus target acquisition, and range. Now, it's catalyst. Dark Forge Trigger states that it removes hip fire accuracy penalties and increases rate of fire from the hip. And stacks of Cranial Spike increases hip rate of fire further. Now, DMT has gone through so many changes. Hence why we have literally put out five or six different reviews of this scout rifle over the course of its life. But this weapon is truly unique in so many ways. Outside of it being one of the only 120 round per minute scout rifles, its hip fire accuracy is really good. Back in the day, we used to call it the long word, considering it felt like a long range last word. And considering this weapon is literally made from the same 
Foundry, you get wine. Now, its new perk selection is pretty interesting. The barrels, mag perks, and stocks are all pretty much the same, but some of its main perks got switched up. In its main perk column, you can choose between Outlaw, four times the charm, Compulsive Reload, Killing Wind, Moving Target, Vorpal Weapon, Rabbit Hit, and Shoot to Loot. Now, there's a lot of decent choices here. Outlaw is the default perk you get at level one, and while it's fine, there are much better options. You've got options like four times a charm or shoot the loot, which could be decent in PvE, rabbit hit, which I know every single PvP player is going to want to use, and a number of PvE players are going to choose that as well. But personally, guys, the best trade on this weapon for my PvE players is compulsive reloader. You got to understand, guys, you do not actually reload this weapon in one go. You're slotting in two bullets at a time. And considering that compulsive reloader gives you 50 reload, as long as you are reloading above 50% of your mag, this is perfect. Look at this, guys. Look at the speed. Now, I know everyone's going to be really caught up on Rabbit Hit. And don't get me wrong, Rabbit Hit is very nice. And for PvP, Rabbit Hit, Moving Target, those two options right there are great. Like, Moving Target's really good, especially if you're aiming down sights more with DMT. And honestly, these days, a lot of people tend to aim down sights. But Rabbit Hit is really nice, whether you're aiming down sights or you're shooting from the hip. Very, very good options. But the debate came up here recently about Rabbit Hit versus Compulsive Reloader. Yes, Rabbit Hit does give you stacks of reload speed, starting at 5 at 1 stack, 30 at 2 stacks, 35 at 3 stacks, 42 and then 60 at max stacks. Sounds great, right? And it is. But keep in mind, guys, the duration there is only for 2 seconds, meaning it will not last the entire duration that it takes to reload this weapon. Again, you're not reloading one whole magazine. It's two bullets at a time, which is why a compulsive reloader, in my opinion, is the better option here. And on top of that, compulsive reloader is not dependent on you landing crits or landing hits for that matter. It's simply just giving you a flat buff for reloading above 50%. Now, I wish we had a mag perk here that can boost our mag size up, which would help Compulsive Reloader even more. But on this one, guys, mag perk is really up to you. I chose Flare Magwell, but keep in mind, with things like Anti-Barrier Scout Rifle, armor piercing rounds all day long. They do extra damage against barrier champions and their barriers. Stack that on with DMT, Compulsive Reloader, and you're good to go. Now, I know Vorpal is also present here, guys, and don't get me wrong, Vorpal is a very nice perk. It does give you that extra damage against majors and bosses, but I'm telling you guys, Compulsive Reloader is the way to go. And this is not the first time that we've seen Compulsive Reloader on this archetype. The Long Arm Scout Rifle also had Compulsive Reloader as a trait, which was a top tier pick for that scout. Now, is this something going to sling Dead Man's Tail to the top of the charts amongst the meta? I wouldn't say that, but I will say that it fulfills that Space Cowboy fantasy better than pretty much everything outside of maybe last word. Fellas and ladies, thank you all for coming and watching. And as always, slap that like button like your mama told you right. <laughs>